This podcast is made possible by supporters like you. Mahalo. And by Atlas Insurance Agency, Hawaii's largest professional agency, helping Hawaii navigate insurance solutions since 1929. More at atlasinsurance.com. Hello, my kako. Welcome to a new episode of What School You Went? Start every conversation with that question. I'm Ron Mizutani, and today we're going to be talking about the healing art of Lomi Lomi, Lomi Lomi Massage. We are pleased to welcome to PBS Hawaii, Kumu Hula and Lomi Lomi trainer, Malia Helela. Uh, aloha, Malia. Welcome to PBS Hawaii. Aloha, aloha. So awesome to have you here. Uh, before we continue, what school mm-hmm. you went? Okay, so no kailua mayao, ma'o ahu. Um, Oya ho'i ma kialanui o Malunu Avenue. And so my first alma mater was Kainalu Elementary School. Um, but before that, my father was an educator. He moved our family to Micronesia. So I grew up in the island of Yap. And so I would say that St. Mary's School in Nimar was my first school. Had a, a year at Kailua Inter. Um, and then I was one of just a handful of kids that got into Kamehameha in the eighth grade. Oh. And so I graduated from there. Maika'i. Did some college. But, Imo. you know, life life is interesting. Yeah? Yeah, it is. I uh, went to massage school, also in Kailua. So the American Institute of Massage Therapy, it's no longer there. <laughs> um, but I went to massage school, graduated, got licensed. And then my kumu asked me to um, to train to be a kumu hula. And that... Um, so my kumu is Antipulu Elo Naipo Park. Our halau is Nahula O Puamana. Um, earlier, uh, she used to call it Puamana Hula Studio. So you know it's an older halau when it's a studio. Studio, <laughs> right, right, right. But yeah, so um, I had my uniki in 2002, and life kind of just unfolded from there. It's an interesting how our life, the path that we have, it, to, to, oftentimes to me, this is just mm-hmm. me, predetermined. Mm-hmm. You know, and and whether, you know, we are meant to be kumuhula, uh, news person, mm-hmm. uh, fireman, I always feel like it is a purpose, right? Mm-hmm. And this is your purpose too, right? Uh, uh, your purpose is to, to offer a healing healing touch, and, and that can be in many different ways. So I'm really excited about talking story with you about not only uh, Lomi Lomi, but also hula. And how mm-hmm. the two interact uh, in your life, especially. Um, let's let's the talk a little bit about Lomi Lomi because people maybe not quite understand what that means. Mm-hmm. Uh, they know it's a type of massage, mm-hmm. but there's much more to Lomi Lomi than just hands on people and healing. Just tell me uh, from your perspective. Oh, absolutely. And it's a question that I've spent really my whole professional career trying to answer because it's hard. Um, Lomi is a massage modality. It's a healing art of massage that has been practiced all around the world, I'd say, um, especially in the Pacific, but very specifically, I believe, cultivated in Hawaii, just in relation to, to Hawaii. You know, our position in the Pacific gives us the trade winds. We have a lot of movement in the air. We're in the middle of the northern Pacific gyre. The ocean rotates around us. And we have abundant water, abundant reefs. There's just something different about Hawaii than other places in the world. And I can only believe that that has played some part in what makes Lomi unique. Now, there are so many different lineages, just like hula. And so there are many different styles of Lomi, everything from chiropractic adjustments to just pule, prayer, and energy work. There are traditions that stem from the martial arts, um, healing work from that realm. There are specific body work that is related to hula. And so to answer Lomi, it's like, what is Lomi? It just depends on what lineage you descend from. Interesting. Yeah, but I would say that pule, prayer, is probably the thing that is common to all Lomi practices. Before, during, after, or all of the above? All of the above. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) While preparing, before they come in, as they come in, what we actually say to our person that we're working on. When we close the treatment, when they leave, when we set up and clean up our space, I'd say that pule is the most important thing. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I recognize that being uh, uh, someone who has benefited from Lomi Lomi, <laughs> um, not just the, 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 the 
relief and healing that happens, but I can feel the mana and and everything and the yuck that e- exits my body mm-hmm. and, and you absorb. I want to talk about that mm-hmm. because, um, you know, anybody who's massage is f- or, or even does any kind of physical therapy, you take some of that away or do you or and, and, and do you release that? How does mm-hmm. how does that work for you? So I'm so happy to talk about this yeah. um, because I think that that if we come to a session with a state of humility, like just that perspective of humility, of asking for guidance, asking for strength, asking for um, insight and wisdom, then it's not just me who's ever doing the work. I'm not just emptying from my own cup. Uh, My hula teacher used to pray before ceremonies. I remember her even as a child. I remember hearing her say, make me a clean vessel allow me to be an instrument. And I think that really set a certain, it just set a certain standard for me that ideally I am not ever expending too much of myself because I come with all of my ancestors standing up on my shoulders or sitting up stacked on my shoulders. You're here with all of your ancestors. And I think that everybody is just having a talk story. And if we ask for guidance, then we have that collective wisdom and energy and mana to do the work. And so to me, a, like an ideal Lomi is a win-win. I feel great coming out. Is that right? Yeah, I don't carry, I don't, I don't burden myself. And it can be hard. I have, um, um, well, not to take this too heavy, but I was at the scene of somebody jumping off of a freeway. And I was the second car on the scene and I just went to the person, and I didn't loan me them, I didn't treat them, but I was present there for them. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, that was the first time I really felt like not only my ancestors were there for me in that moment, but his ancestors, <clears throat> excuse me, were there for him. And for weeks after, my sense of touch was so heightened, touching my steering wheel, opening the door, everything was so heightened, I believe, because I had this cumulative just support system there mm-hmm. for me in that very difficult moment. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. I believe that. I yeah. believe that to be true. Uh, when, when you, so what, what would you consider your style being? Because some people really get in there, right? And, mm-hmm. and whether they, they get into your muscle and, and depending on how much pressure mm-hmm. you want, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I know some Lomi Lomi, uh, are they called artists? Uh, practitioners. Practitioners, mm-hmm. that they really don't even put that much pressure. Right. It's more about touch and heal and pray yeah. and pull it. But what's your style? Yeah, so like I said earlier, there's so many different styles. I call my style kind and firm. And so I was trained, and I think it's a common thing within Lomi to cleanse the bones, scrub the bones, clean the bones. And so my Lomi is deep. I focus more on the skeleton than the muscles necessarily. Mm. And so I have deep work, but it's always with the, um, always with kindness first. And so I would say always with aloha. And because I'm a, not only a hula dancer, but a hula, a kumu hula, I'm not the kind of kumu that's going to point out a dancer and say, hey, you, like, don't do it that way. Right. <laughs> Instead, I will tell my whole class, hey, everybody, let's sense your shoulders. Let's all move this way. Mm-hmm. And so in my style of Lomi, I don't point out the sore muscle or the tight area. I work everybody. I say, okay, all the muscles, everybody, let's move together and let's tap into to well-being. So I don't just treat an injury. I treat the whole person. That's beautiful. It's, it's all interwoven, body, mind, spirit, all of it. Because when most places you go, <laughs> whether it's in a, a, a professional setting or in the mall, uh, mm-hmm. And not, not discounting them all because I used to go to the Lomi Lomi mm-hmm. one in Windward, yeah. Windward Mall. Uh, but you know how they have the little stations and people give 15 minutes mm-hmm. and 30 minutes. and Oh, uh, magic can happen in 15 minutes. But I yeah. think it's more challenging in the Western medical field right. where people, uh, practitioners are only, I guess, able to work on an injury, which doesn't take into account how everything is so interconnected. Right. Yeah. yeah. You may be feeling discomfort in your shoulders and your neck, but... Yeah, it might whole, be caused by something else, else, and it's certainly affecting everything. <laughs> yeah, it's a full-body experience. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as a kumuhula, you use lomi in that as well, or do is mm-hmm. it vice versa? How does that work for you? Yeah, so um, 
I went to uh, Ka'ahahula o Halawaola, which is a, a hula conference. It started in Hilo. Um, it was a number of kumuhula that wanted to just make a conference for Hawaiians in Hawaii, you know, about hula. And so I went to the first one with my kumu, and then later um, it traveled to different islands. On the island of Kauai, I saw, um, I saw an intensive class for hakikino, which is body limbering. And I was so fascinated because it was hula and it was massage. And so many, uh, many people who dance hula, in fact, probably all of you, will recognize your basic kaholo, your hella. These basics are part of the body conditioning, but there are also certain stretches and stepping on the legs uh, that was very common in traditional hula where there was a body worker for the dancers. Hmm. And so I, when I learned about that, um, I decided to incorporate that into my classes. And so we do. We step on each other's feet, which is amazing. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it does shape the dancer. It shapes the dance when you condition the body in the right way. Kino body. Yes. Ha-a. Yes. Ha-a kino. Well, I, I yeah. you know, I've, I've heard of it, but I've never really understood what that meant. Um, but your training began early in life. Mm-hmm. When, when, when would you say you received your calling and answered it? Um, well, that's a good question. So hula, I didn't start until we moved back to Oahu from Yap. And so I was about eight when I started dancing hula. But massage I've always done. I remember being uh, just a little girl circling my mom's knuckles with my fingers and feeling so proud, like, I made this up. I made this massage technique. (laughs) And then in high school, I was 16 when I wrote my first massage manual. It was a school assignment, and I chose to write my first massage book (laughs) at 16. And um, I think I've just always known... And there were times where I wished I could name an ancestor that I could say I descend from a lineage of healers, and I don't have those names. But I do believe that everything that we do is a reflection of what our ancestors did. So I can only trust <laughs> that, um, that yeah, I am here doing what I'm supposed to do. And um, I think it's interesting to think about how sometimes when we struggle, when we have challenges, when we suffer, it reveals things. And for me, it was um, a very difficult birth of my twins that revealed to me that my life's work is to settle the nervous system. And so whether it's hula or lomi, to me, the first step is settling the nervous system and then allowing healing to unfold from there. How do you do that? Um, that that so sounds like ways. a million dollar question. How, do you, how you know, do you do that? I think there's so many ways. It's how we, um, how we connect to people, how we can even set up the space. And I think coming to a very core Hawaiian value of language, our words, the words that we choose, um, they're like seeds. And so if I'm working on somebody who has an injury or a tight shoulder, if I say, oh, dang, you're tight, that can start to grow in a person. They can feel validated, like I am tight, I am tight, and become very tight. And so I think that using the language of, wow, your body is really protecting you. Your muscles are wrapping your bone. It's holding you safe. And changing the language to be inclusive, to be kind, to be calm. To me, I think that's maybe one of the first steps of settling the nervous system. Uh. But it's accepting people. I think it's, it's aloha. It's just sharing aloha of living aloha. And if I can transmit that through my voice, through my touch, through my teaching, then I feel like I feel like I've done my job. Through your words, too. Through yeah. the words, absolutely. The, the, the human body can really is very powerful and can heal itself. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we do more damage to ourselves just by our own, mm-hmm. our own mind. Right? Absolutely. Like you say, oh, my gosh, I'm so tight. You know, and it's I, a I, self-fulfilling prophecy. So yeah. why don't we load ourselves with, um, with words of healing? I'm going to try that because <laughs> you know my neck right now is so <laughs> tight. Uh, but I've had that all my life, uh, and maybe I contribute to that with right. My... And the question is, what are you protecting yourself? Right. You know, how are you protecting yourself? It's all and these why? brains in here. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. No, that's not it. That's tr- trust me. That's not it. You you wear many hats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mali, you a lomi lomi practitioner, a kumuhula, mm-hmm. uh, a recording artist. Tell me about that, that adventure and that, uh, when did that say, hey, I can, I like to try this. Okay, so if it's okay, I'm going to take a few steps back yes, and please. share a little bit of our family story. So within our family, there's a, a story of my great-grandma 
who was a singer, she was a musician, um, she claimed or she believed that she was cursed. We guess around in her 30s when my grandmother was a young girl and she stopped singing. Hmm. And so I never heard her sing and my mother never heard her sing. She was Mauna Leo, she was a native speaker. I was studying Hawaiian and I never spoke to her. We just, we'd never made that connection. And so I don't know if just hearing the story of how my kumu, or my, I'm sorry, my, um, my tutu was um, cursed, voice taken away, I never was able to chant or sing. Wow. I, I just felt like a hand was on my mouth and that maybe that's a residue. Maybe it's just from hearing the story, that power of language. Um, but it wasn't until um, my kumu asked me to be her Miss Aloha that I realized, oh, no, I have to chant. I have to chant on stage. <laughs> and so I got permission and blessings from her to study Oli under Kumu John Keola Lake. And he would have us one by one chant to get into the classroom. He would point at us and say, you chant this, you chant that. And I learned eventually to, to let my voice kind of just to let it out. And um, later, as I started teaching and singing, um, I decided, well, you know, I think I'm going to actually try and record this. So my first album is actually a kid's album. It's a little Keiki album. You can find it. It's Keiki Hula Love. Um, but I feel like every time I showed up at the recording studio to record, every time I sing even, even speaking the story today, I feel like is a step of ancestral healing and so even though I feel I kind of I feel sheepish talking about my kids album because it's just a little cakey album um, it does represent something really significant to me and to my family you know just to to record voice and um, it's pretty amazing even you, as humble as it is <laughs> right you know I'm going it to ask courage. you to sing something right <laughs> can you sing a verse or, or two uh, sure yeah. sure Okay, so, um, oh my goodness, which one? Okay, I'm just going to sing the one that we use for our hula practice. So this you might recognize. Sun, moon, stars, wind, clouds, rain, and mountains. O kala, o kala, kamahina na hoku, na hoku hele, amai kamakani, so that just lets us practice our hula motions for sun, moon, stars, wind, rain, all of the things. That was beautiful. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Rianne Rian is on uh, production art. Uh, she's she's our singer at PBS Hawaii. Oh, fantastic! Beautiful, yeah, though Rianne, very beautiful. Rianne, she, she can sing. Um, wow, that's that was beautiful. You know, you, I want to back it up a little because you said mm -hmm. something that maybe, and, and I want to ask you for your permission if you want to even go there because mm -hmm. permission is so important it is. in Thank all you. we do. Thank purpose. you. Uh, even in in massage and cool, especially Absol in hula, and, absolutely. But um, just talking about this, I'm, I want to make sure it's it's pono. You said grandma was cursed, mm -hmm. or she said she was cursed. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, I just had Lopaka Kapunui on mm -hmm. uh, a few a few weeks ago talking about kahuna mm -hmm. and curse and um, how you can lift the curse and and the power of the kahuna. Where do you? Does, did, do you ever learn more about why grandma felt this way or or was it ever remedied? I don't know. And see, that's that's the big mystery. I think that's where life gets interesting. It's those questions that invite us to even think about and consider what is it to be cursed? Right. There was the only thing I, that I know is that there was jealousy associated with the curse. And so I don't know who it was, by what means. All I know is that we never heard her sing. And so it, like, I have been in a situation where somebody was yelling, you know, curses, like expletives right. at me. And I did feel my voice gone. I felt my voice taken away in that moment. And I had this realization that, well, okay, so there are such things as curses and there are counter cursing. There's, 
such a robust and such a traditional practice of countering, mm-hmm. of protecting, of pale. Yes. And so I think that、um, I don't have answers for that,、yeah. other than that the more I live my life with kindness and grace and truth and strength, the more I do things that challenge me, the more I can speak up, like coming and sitting here and、for、speaking、sure. on a podcast is. That's kind of it's kind of a nervous thing to do, and so I think that these things that we all have opportunities to do, it does go into a cumulative healing,、yes. and I think that we can have healing backwards towards our ancestors, and we can even provide a foundation of healing for those that come after us. That's w- very well. I'm a well mom s- of four. I think、yeah. about these things all the time. I bet you do,、uh, Malia,、yeah. and and that was very well said. I think. You know, just by hearing you say that, and maybe even again, I wanted to make sure it was Pono to、Thank、ask you. you about this. But by you sharing,、mm-hmm. not to say we are reversing or 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 fighting back the curse, because it's such a complex、uh, world. That world that that I don't even want to pretend to understand fully,、mm-hmm. or but no, but I am familiar with、mm-hmm. uh, that you are healing,、mm-hmm. that you are、um, protecting. Grandma,、mm-hmm. your tutu,、right. and yourself in the future generation, and by your gift of voice <laughs> that we just all heard, Grandma's singing too. Your、Thank、tutu you. is singing in you.、Um, Thank you. So understand that I know. I know you do.、Mm-hmm. It's pretty heavy to think about, though, when you look at it that way. That it she's, is. Her voice is coming through through is. your you. vocal cords right now. <laughs> It's beautiful. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And you know we do have wisdom passed down from our ancestors that can inform how we act. Like there's one oli that I learned from Kumu Lake, and it's a, a chant actually to heal desecration done to the land, and it talks about ending the mold, the mildew, the blight, the barrenness. So that there can be healing, and I used to be uncomfortable. Like, why do we have to even mention the blight and the mold and all of those things? Why even say it?、Right. Why not just go straight to the healing? But as I've gotten older and had more life experience, kids growing up, sometimes you do have to state, like, say what it is. You have to acknowledge and recognize harms or you know ills, so that we can take steps to rectify it. And so I think that that is a traditional pule. Yeah. Yeah. To heal the land, and when we heal the land, it's just a. It can be an analogy of how we heal ourselves. Sometimes we have to go through the pain. We do. To go and get the gain. I mean, whether you're a lip bodybuilder, weightlifter,、uh, athlete, a、mm-hmm. kumu、uh, hula, or even just you in general, you have to face the、mm-hmm. challenges. You cannot just. Sweep it under the rug, right? It's right. still there. It'll still be there. It'll still be、so、there. And first... living a life of grace is is a way of doing that. Yeah,、What、my first Lomi teacher,、that. she used to tell me, and I'll never forget it. She said, "Honey, it's not pain; it's perspective." Exactly, exactly. You ever did those sweep stuff under the rug? Oh yeah, all the time, <laughs> all the time. When mom's not looking, <laughs> we're human. We're human. <laughs> yeah, we are the flesh. Yeah.、Uh, you know, you continue to learn, and absolutely, and you continue to、uh, educate yourself. And that never stops, and、mm-hmm. should never stop.、Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you doing now to advance your life's mission and purpose? Oh gosh, so many things. I love reading and learning.、Um, I read the thesaurus for fun. Right. <laughs> I'll crack open books like,、um, <laughs> of course, Olelo No Eo.、Um, some people have a practice of himo、uh, or vehe by bala, opening the Bible and reading a passage. For me, I do that with the dictionary and the thesaurus. I'll just open a book. And just see what what insight is there for me,、um, but yeah, I would say that um, my um, my youngest child is about to graduate from high school. Wow! Yeah, and so that is a whole era of life, you know, that is now transitioning into、um, yeah, having grown up kids, and so I think every moment, every moment is an opportunity just to to be grateful, to learn, to thrive. I have so many things. I、um, I was researching my great grandma, my tutu. Went to the Library of Congress and sitting there in the reading room, surrounded by so many books. They say in modern times, that's like the Library of Alexandria of today. And sitting in the middle of so many books was so inspiring. 
I started listing all of my writing projects. I've got 44 at this point. So wow. I would say right now it's continuing to learn, but also starting to write. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. And there's a writer in every generation on my dad's side, back to the Mayflower, a writer and a teacher in every generation. So yeah. you're fulfilling both sides. I think so. I'm Pretty trying. busy, huh? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, a, yeah, me too. I, I, I love to write and I'm in the process of writing a book. Oh, fantastic. Um, Can you share about it? Yeah, or is well, it it's still... about mental health, actually. Oh, and fantastic. my own journey. So necessary. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's been a long process, you know. It just takes a tremendous commitment mm -hmm. to, and I'm, I'm right now I'm, I'm lagging in that respect. But I also secretly want to do a, a, a romance novel. But, oh, please but do. But that's, that's another story. <laughs> like, like Rianchi giggling. <laughs> a few people know that that's my one of my goals before I leave planet Earth. Yeah, please uh, do. <laughs> that's, that's a whole different podcast. <laughs> uh, you, you know, a when, when, couple of things that, and this is totally off subject, but really not. You talked about a thesaurus. Uh -huh. You watch Friends. Mm -hmm. You watch Friends. So one day, uh, Joey was handed, Joey being a, uh, one of the characters on the program, a thesaurus <laughs> to help write a, le a letter of recommendation for Monica and Chandler. And he just butchered the English language because he went hyperbolic on, on every word that he had. And I just thought about that scene when, um, you know, somebody who's getting a hold of a thesaurus can be very dangerous. Oh, a little bit of knowledge <laughs> yeah. in the wrong hands. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's such a funny, if you've never seen that episode, you got to see it. Uh, because um, I, I have a couple of colleagues who, I swear, they, they do things with a thesaurus right next to them. Because you go, what? What did you just say? <laughs> Speak English. And then the other thing that I wanted to ask you about was, um, that you had addressed was when, when you are working on, on someone and and you know performing your 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 work you said you don't take away yuck mm -hmm. you don't feel that mm -hmm. um long time ago i'm not sure her name and and folks who listen who know know this was a was a oriental lady asian lady who used to massage and when she was done this may sound kind of gross, but she would burp. burp yes, I've met right? her. You know her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she was in Kaimuki. Mm -hmm. So I went to see her uh, because I had so much problems with my neck and, and I injured it when I was younger in sports. So she she would, she would worked on me mm -hmm. and every five seconds just belch, burp, burp, burp. And it and kind of, at first was kind of like, whoa, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I knew it was coming, mm -hmm. but she was really doing mm -hmm. it. Um, and it was her way of letting some of that go. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, so you met well, her. Well, I think that's the beauty of the practice, yeah. right? Is that we all look different and we all have different means of releasing. And I was recently asked by somebody like, what kinds of, like, do you, what kind of spiritual protection do you do? And I really have been thinking about this for weeks now and that I don't really have a daily practice other than living my life. Like hula dancers will know this, hula is life. I would say lomi is life. And so generally I really strive to live a good clean life and I'll use protective measures when I need it. Um, but I do wanna give a shout out to my mom. Um, my mother is actually the first person who massaged me from when I was a child to this day. If I even scrunch my forehead, and look like I have a headache, she'll just walk over and massage me. And when I was young, I did some crazy traveling and she made a promise to God, if you keep Malia safe, I will pray the rosary every day um, that she's on her travels. And if you bring her home to me, I will pray the rosary every day until I die. And so now it's been decades of her praying the rosary over me every day. And that rosary has now grown as an umbrella to extend over everyone in her life. She has assigned beads on her rosary to different family members, to my Haumana, to all of my Lomi students. I mean, she covers so many people in prayer. And I think I have that privilege of that protection over me. And it humbles me and it inspires me. Well, what can I then do for the people under my care? Like what kinds of protections can I put into place mm -hmm. that aren't anything fancy or special, but just consistent, consistent in their power. And I think that um, of all my superpowers, I think shield might be the main one. I can bring people under my shield. And it is that protections that have been set in place by my mother 
and many, many, many people before her. She prays for people that don't have people praying for them. <laughs> like That's how thorough she is. And so I think that, um, again, going back to how we release, how we let go, um, I could talk about a million things like going into the ocean to hi'uvai or kapukai, um, symbolically immersing in water, pikai, sprinkling with water and salt, mm -hmm. um, bringing in plants into your space. There's so many different things. But I think for me, it just comes back to just the protections that are already in place from our ancestors, those that came before and those who are living. And then what then becomes our responsibility to, to put that forth? I mean, in sports, coaches, you know this, you have to hold your team. Mm -hmm. And the team is never just your players, it's their families, yeah, their <laughs> circumstance. Parents. <laughs> yeah, it's all of it, yeah. where they're living, yeah. what they're eating. Yes. And so I think that when we can even begin to have an understanding of creating and shaping and holding our spaces, it can be overwhelming, but simple at the same time. <laughs> I believe that to be true. Yeah, and yeah. I do have another pule to yes. share, if that's okay. Yes. So I'll describe it in English first, and then I'll, um, I'll do it for everyone. This is originally a prayer to bless a home. And so it would um, protect the home from top to bottom, inside, outside, corner to corner, from the east side of the house to the west side of the house, from the zenith to the horizon, the rising to the setting of the sun, from the roots of the trees around it to the leaf tips. So all of these kind of big, big opposite terms. And I adapted that to be a prayer for Mauliola, which is well-being. And so this is a prayer for the body. And so to you, to you, to the listeners, this is Pule Mauliola. Heo u mau kia i mai kapo mai e na na i a mai a ho ola. Mai luna la lo mai lo koa wa ho mai kahi kihi a kahi kihi. Mai ka uka ke kai. Mai kahi kina ke komohana. Mai ka ho o ku i a kahala vai. Mai ke kumu a ka velau, mai ka la hiki a ka la kau. Ki a i i a ma la ma i a, e pale a kui na pili ki a hiki mauli o la. A ma mau a no a e. And two claps to close. And so some listeners might recognize that, but be like, hey, wait a minute, that's different than what I know. And that's the beauty of the practice. You know, I did adapt it. I consciously adapted. I changed the order of things. I changed it from a house to a body. And that's the beauty of the practice, is that we can continue to shape and innovate and include. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that gift as well. You have room for two more under your shield. Absolutely. <laughs> we get all the use of help that we can get. Well, you know, going back to like where, what school you went, where, where did you grow up? So I grew yeah. up on Malunyu Avenue. That's the shade, the shelter, the protection of the coconut. Right. And so even where I grew up was still under this Malu, this shelter and protection. So more than enough room. Come on. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. One more thing. I, I, you talk about how you cleanse for me, it was always the ocean. It mm -hmm. will always be the ocean. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned that when I was very young. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so much so, my tutu gave me the nickname Duke. Oh, for nice. Duke Hanamoku. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was such in tune with the ocean, the water. And uh, yeah, you called for Ronald at my house, and people would be like, ah, that's Duke. <laughs> but uh, I shared that gift with my, my children as well. And to this day, I still need that cleansing. Mm -hmm. And I feel it. I mean, I feel like, oof, I need that 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 getaway. It's my playground. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, my dear friend, son, Auntie Rilla, she was the one who really pounded it home to me as she was battling cancer. Right. And um, she would say, brother, without the ocean, I, I would not be here right now. Mm -hmm. And her fight lasted a little, way longer than anybody could have imagined. Doctors, she baffled science and everything else. Uh, eventually they'll succumb to, to, to that. But sh she is my makana. She's my gift as well to teach me about cleanse, right. letting go. Letting go. Yeah. Yeah, they say that the, the heart, or not the heart, but the root of all illness is hihia. It's entanglement. Right. Right, whether it's scar tissue is a form of entanglement. 
relationships. Broken relationships is a form of entanglement. And our bodies are constantly repairing. Some scar tissue, we just learn to move around. Others can dissipate. You know, with work, naturally, there are mechanisms in place where the body will repair. And I think the soul, the body does it, sometimes naturally, and sometimes it needs a little bit of help. I think most people probably are familiar with the ocean. For me, I love wind. And so going up to the Pali Lookout, to Makapu'u, I've got long hair. If the wind can lift the hair off my neck, I feel cleansed. Um, another thing is I love waterfalls. Um, I love shade, so I, you, you really won't find me at the beach. <laughs> I'm a mountain girl. My name is the mountain mist, <laughs> where the lehua grows, the rainbow-hued mist. I'm a mountain girl. And so hiking to a waterfall and just letting the water pound on my head, pound on my shoulders, when I shake with cold, that is cleansing. And I think that we all, every single one of us, have something that we can recognize mm -hmm. that can help us even just to feel better for a little while, um, but ultimately the things that help us feel unburdened, feel free, feel open, um, I think that's what we can gravitate toward, and those are allies. And it's out there. It's out there, and, you know and it's in there. <laughs> right? I, totally, I can totally visualize that right now for me, whether it be you or anyone else. Standing up in the poly and letting your hair go. Just of course, no more, hair. no more hair like used to uh, <laughs> for me. But I can I can totally understand that, and and I can I can visualize that. Sometimes it takes a little bit of urging for us to <laughs> go to the ocean. Sometimes, right? so let this be your yes. reminder, everybody. Perfect. Take a moment for yourself. Go to the beach. Drive up to the poly lookout. Beautiful. Take a drive around the island. Just choose something that makes you feel better. That makes you feel well. Uh, Malia, what a, what a treasure it's been talking story with you. Re thank you very much for stopping by, not only talking about Lomi Lomi and, and Hula, but just life, living life with grace. And, yeah. and it's I feel hard. cleansed. I feel so clean. Yeah, it's challenging <laughs> to be a soul in a body. Yeah. It's hard, but the quality of our connections, you know, the quality of our relationships, whether it's to people or to land or to practices, it really, there are avenues of healing all around us. And maybe I'll, I'll just close with, <clears throat> close with this one thought um, from Hawaiian La'o Lapa'au, herbal medicine. It's the medicine you need is somewhere in your line of sight. And so whether that's a person or a plant, the medicine you need is in front of you somewhere. So I hope you find it. Mahalo. Thank you for sharing your gift. Thank you. And, and understanding uh, and answering the call. Your, your kuleana, you are fulfilling a lot of, uh, a lot of missions and generations, including Tutu, who's Thank with you, you today. Mahalo. Mahalo Nui for joining us, folks. Join us next week. Never know who's going to stop by. Another episode of What School You Went. Until then, ahui ho. Ahui ho. What School You Went is a PBS Hawaii production. Music by Taimane Garner. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And tell your friends. You can find us on pbshawaii.org and everywhere you get your podcasts.